Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, General Aviation Avionics Market Report is depressing. SpaceX has launched another satellite and recovered the booster again. The Air Force is offering money to retain pilots. I'm Brie Cross, it's August 16th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Aircraft Electronics Association has released its second quarter 2016 avionics market report and unfortunately it seems to be in line with other aviation business association reports that have recently come out. The bottom line is sales are down. In the first six months of the year, total worldwide business and general aviation avionics sales amounted to about $1.1 billion. This number indicates a 6.5% decrease when compared to the first six months of 2015. Sales during the second quarter months of April, May, and June showed a 9.3% decrease compared to the 2015 second quarter sales. Of the more than $1.1 billion in sales during the first six months of 2016, 54.3% came from avionics equipment installed by airframe manufacturers during original production, while avionics equipment installed after original production market amounted to 45.7%. AEA President Paula Dirk said in part, quote, with so many new and innovative avionics products introduced to the general aviation market in the first half of the year, it is disappointing to see decreasing sales figures compared to the first six months of 2015, particularly in the retrofit market. In the report, Dirks also pondered how the sales of ADSB equipment needed to comply with the 2020 mandate and the introduction of new avionics at EAA AirVenture 2016 will affect future reports. Obviously, the industry hopes sales will improve. On Sunday, August 14th, SpaceX launched their Falcon 9 booster with the JSAT-16 from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station into a geostationary transfer orbit. While this appears to be a pretty common thing nowadays, leave it to SpaceX, to put their own brand of icing on top of the cake, bringing the booster back for a safe landing on their floating platform is particularly tricky because of the height of this orbit. It requires a lot of fuel to get the satellite where it needs to be and still leave enough to maneuver the booster back to Earth for a safe landing. Well, they did it again, and this is the fifth time this year they have returned the booster back to Earth. It is the fourth time they have landed successfully on the floating platform. The Sky Perfect JSAT satellite offers a wide range of services, including video distribution, data transfer communications in Asia, Russia, Oceania, the Middle East, and North America. The company also operates the largest home satellite broadcasting platform in Japan, which provides coverage to approximately 3.4 million households. After the break, the Air Force says fighter pilots are in short supply. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The U.S. Air Force would like to keep the fighter and UAV pilots it has trained, and they are looking to one of the best motivators to do so. According to a report in the Air Force Times, the answer is cash. It's reported the Air Force is looking to nearly double retention bonuses for pilots to nearly $48,000 per year. That means some could see an additional $432,000 in their bank accounts, depending on how long they stay in the service. And airmen who fly the Air Force's remotely piloted aircraft are also being enticed to stay with retention bonuses of up to $35,000 per year for those who sign up for a five-year hitch. The only hitch in this program is that UAV pilots who are enlisted rather than officers are not allowed to accept a retention bonus at this time. The Air Force Times says senior leaders are working to change this role. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar.
Our first event actually occurs tomorrow, August 17th. It's called the Atlantic City Thunder Over the Boardwalk and features high-level performances such as the Air Force Thunderbirds and the Breitling Jet Team. Stand by for loud noises and a lot of wind because the Marines will also be there with their MV-22 Osprey. There will be boat riding and of course you're on the boardwalk with all the casinos. The City of Chicago is out to prove that Atlantic City is not the only place where you can have an air show and boats all at the same time. On August 19th through the 21st, you can catch the action at the Chicago Air and Water Show. It's one of the largest free emission events of its kind and headlines the Air Force Thunderbirds, U.S. Army Parachute Team, Golden Knights, and the U.S. Navy Leap Frogs. The popular lakefront event features a wide variety of military and civilian aerial demonstrations in the skies above Chicago. Our next big event is in Southern California on the weekend of August 20th and 21st. It's the Wings Over Camarillo Air Show. The annual Wings Over Camarillo Air Show features multiple air show performers, U.S. military static display aircraft, commemorative Air Force static and flying displays, experimental aircraft static and flight displays, vendors, and lots of food venues. And if you're looking to experience the excitement of aviation history, the EAA Ford Trimotor will make a stop in Rapid City, South Dakota on August 19th and 20th. You can climb aboard one of the first mass-produced airliners and step back in time to aviation's golden age. A flight on EAA's Ford Trimotor is a flight back to an era where air travel was considered a luxury and reservation computers never broke down. After these messages, Naseo Awards first Henry O. Scholarship. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A student attending the University of North Dakota has been selected to receive the first Henry R. Grzynski Scholarship Award established by the National Association of State Aviation Officials. The $1,000 scholarship will be presented later this month to Jordan Errett of Minnesota. A pilot charged with operating his aircraft under the influence has been sentenced to five years probation and must surrender his pilot certificate. The pilot, with his 10-year-old son aboard, attempted to take off while intoxicated and crashed before becoming airborne. There were no serious injuries. The U.S. Marine Corps has begun a full reset of its CH-53E Super Stallion heavy lift helicopters in an effort aimed at significantly increasing the number of operationally fit aircraft. Every airframe undergo on average a 110-day process of refurbishment. A new turbine engine for Army helicopters comes closer to becoming a reality. The Advanced Affordable Turbine Engine Program is a 3,000 horsepower engine demonstrator program to provide advanced propulsion capability for future Army rotorcraft platforms. City officials in Lafayette, Louisiana say that Bell Helicopter has committed to another two years at its facility at Lafayette Regional Airport. It's reported that the company is set to begin updates to its least 82,300 square foot manufacturing facility. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The U.S. Marine Corps is conducting tests with a Black Hornet PD-100 helicopter drone that can deliver live video feeds from three cameras from about a mile away. The tiny 2.9-pound helicopter's three cameras point forward, directly down, and one at 45 degrees. PC World reports that the tiny UAV has already been used in Afghanistan by the British military and that the U.K. has made the aircraft a regular part of its military kit. The Black Hornet is made by Norway's Prox Dynamics. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.